just a minute. He don't know it. <laughs> had a had a wonderful day yesterday with them, as I already told you. And uh, as I as the day went on, I thought all day long. I said, "Man, how the tables has turned over the years." Uh, exactly. Uh, we spent a lot of time in recording studios, and man, I hate it. I, I really do. It's stressful and dealing with all that stuff. Right. But yesterday, and and if I if I'm traveling, I like to be the one doing the driving. Uh, Tammy uh, is a good driver. Zach's a good driver. Uh, Jenna's a good driver. She's giving her drawing her eyes down. I had to make sure. Uh, Everybody in the house is good drivers. I don't want to make anybody mad. But I, I, I can rest. I can sleep better if I'm driving. I can rest. But anyways, uh, Zach done the driving yesterday. I rode with him. And uh, he bought the gas. Times has changed. We got to the studio. And, and uh, Zach, uh, he, he was uh, a large engine in charge. He was calling the shots and old dad just had to sit back and play the bass. I sung two lines on one song. That's all they wanted me to do. Uh, everybody, that's pretty sad. Man. Times has changed. Two lines. So uh, if you buy that CD, you, you, you buy it and you listen for them two lines. The poor old preacher got the same. But anyways, uh, it, 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 I, I didn't tell you all that for not for a reason but uh was and we had a good day me and him rode together and we don't get to spend a lot of time together folks probably think that we spend a lot of time together but we don't especially alone but we had a good time didn't we zach i had a good time did you buddy yep. well here comes the good part I was coming back last night he said, Dad, I'm excited about the Sunday school lesson tomorrow. He said, I'm not going to get on it. He said, but I got a thought I want to share with you. And above all the blessings that God gave me, and Zach, I'm going to call him back and let him share with you what he shared with me. But of all the blessings that God has bestowed upon me as being Zach's dad, when Zach begins to talk about the Word of God and begin to weep, I thought there for a while that I was going to get a drive because he was weeping so much. But Zach, I want you to come back. I know that you said it probably wouldn't fit into your lesson, but it was a thought that God gave you. I want you to come back and share that thought about Jesus. Before I get the invitation. Well, uh, I was researching. The, Jesus told me. What happened was, when Jesus said that about one man greater than Jonah was there, he was doing miracles in front of people, casting out demons, and they accused him of being a demon. They accused him of being a devil. And he said, well, how could a devil cast out a devil? And they said, well, if you, who, if you are who you say you are, we need a sign. And he said, the only sign you're going to get is the sign of Jonah's. The sign of Jonah. Listen to this. I was reading about Jewish law. And because they did not have the knowledge we do of the human body and, and medical science, they were not completely sure what happened when someone died physically. And, you know, it, it might have been the case sometimes that if somebody had dropped into a coma or something like that, they would have you know, by all outward signs, they would have thought they were dead when, in fact, they were alive and might be revived shortly thereafter. But if someone had, it, and because of that, in Jewish law, it was required that for someone to be officially dead, like sign the death certificate, they had to be dead for three days. Come on, so, come on church, don't miss this. Amen. I'm with you. And it didn't necessarily mean three 24-hour days. You know, if you died on one day, that counted as one, and then the next day counted as one, and then the third day counted as one. So Jonah being in the belly of that whale for three days, people no doubt assumed that he was dead. Yeah. 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 And then Come when on. he was delivered back onto the shore, it was as if a dead man was walking Come on, buddy. Amen. 
Which also means that Jesus stayed dead just exactly long enough uh, come on, John. for everybody to acknowledge that he had died. Amen. It also, I've often wondered when Jesus died, why he didn't just get up Saturday morning. Why he had to lay there a couple days. He wanted to make sure that people knew that he died just as surely as anybody else had died. And then when he rose, it wasn't just some mistake. It wasn't just that he was in some kind of coma or something. It was that he was officially dead and was suddenly alive again by the power of God. But I thought about Jesus didn't get up at noontime. Jesus didn't get up at 6 o'clock in the evening. Jesus rose very early in the morning on the third day. Which I have to believe means He didn't stay dead one minute longer than He had to. He didn't stay gone one minute longer than He had to. He didn't leave us one minute longer than He had to. The minute He was officially dead was the minute He got up. Because there were things that had to be done. There were people that had to be saved. There was mercy that had to be given. He didn't stay gone one minute longer because He knew we needed Him. You're right. Where is she saying? Man, when he said he was greater than Jonah, the, the people listening to him might not have known what he was talking about, but I can say much, much greater than Jonah. Yeah. Because Jonah relied on God and a big old fish to bring him back. Yeah. Jesus got up all by himself. Yeah. That was my thought. Hey, yeah. you can't be that kidney. That's why I was about to get to drive. Jesus, when he went, when he and his parents, you know, they had went off into another city to pay their taxes, and they was coming back, and they they had lost they had lost Jesus, and they began to search the crowd. When they finally found him, how many days later? Yes, sir. Mary, I can imagine as she jumped on Jesus. Son, you worried me and your father to death, and what in the world are you going on? And Jesus looked at his mother and said, Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And Zach began to tell me that last night, and I thought about it after I got home. Zach told me, as he told you, we was coming down the mountain. He said, Dad, I believe he didn't waste no time. I don't believe that he took his time. Boys, when that third day officially arrived, Jesus had to get up. Listen, he didn't wait to get himself pumped up. Bobby, I don't believe he had to freshen himself up. But I believe the same words that came out of his mouth when he was 12 years old, come out of his mouth again at 33 years old, and said, I must be about my father's business. I've got souls to save. Praise the Lord, the work has done been done. I've done shed my blood. I've done everything there is to do, and now I'll go to the Father and I'll wait for the coming of my children. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we praise you, Lord, for all that you've done. You covered all bases. You covered all bases. And we thank you, Lord. You made a way. Your word said you made a way where where there seemed to be no way. Oh, we thought it was too hard. We thought it was too hard. Jonah thought no way. No way will people listen. John, why in the world are you sending me to the most ungodliest place on the earth? Why do you want me to go there? God, those people don't want to hear what I got to say. Those people will never heed. They're a wicked and adulterous generation. But oh, God, little did Jonah know. And Lord, so many times we, everybody in this building, Lord, fears. We got a fear of tomorrow. We got a fear of what's down the road. And we forget, Lord, that you've gone before us. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. The psalmist said, He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. We can't hardly lead if we eat in front. So, Father, we thank you for going before us. We thank you for leading us. But Father, as you went before Jonah, down into that city, and you prepared the hearts for your word, the same you'll do today. So, Father, help us to remember that you go before us. Somebody under the sound of my voice that don't know you in the pardon and forgiveness of sin. They would love to be saved, Lord. But they just see no way. They're like Jonah. They ain't no way that they'll do it. They'll be able to succeed. Help those individuals to realize this morning, Lord, that they're, that they're not the Savior. You are. And Lord, you've done the work. They don't have to do the work. Just trust you and accept you. So, Father, I pray that you would give them courage. Give them courage to say, okay, Lord, I've got the picture now. You're going to go before me. You're going to help me do this. You'll not only be before me, you'll be beside me. You'll not only be before me and beside me, but you'll be behind me. You'll not only be before me, beside me, behind me, but you'll be in me, living in me, Lord, and giving me the strength that I need. Somebody under the sound of my voice that don't have perfect peace this morning, help them to see you got it for them, Lord, if they'll just surrender. Say, Lord, I'm tired of worrying, tired of fretting, tired of making excuses. So, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I'm like Jonah on the shore after the fish spit him out. All right, Lord, I got the picture. It's probably going to be a mess, but I'm going to go. Jonah had the revival of all revivals because he was obedient and because he was merciful. Thank God for second chances. So, Father, I pray that you would work your work as only you can. Father, just allow us to be obedient to you. It's in your name I pray. When I think Thank you, Lord. how he came so far from glory
Does anybody in the building this morning deserve the Lord? Sing it.